you, sir. Under, can you? Under, can you? Under the you, sir. Okay. What do you think about Biden not showing up? You showing up before he did. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Hey, Trump, take a picture of my phone. Take a picture. Oh. It's dark. The, real, the real president. Yeah, Trump. Trump. Yeah, Trump. Trump. Thank you. 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 You want to get those Trump bottles, I think, more than anybody else. But we're bringing a lot of water, thousands of bottles. You just watched Trump show up to East Palestine and be welcomed like a savior. And he will unquestionably be using this in a political ad. In fact, I feel like the ad kind of writes itself. While sleepy Joe Biden was in Ukraine, I went to the town of East Palestine and I handed out water. And look, it's cynical. But I think that him being there is damn good politics. And the optics are terrible for Joe Biden to not show up when people need him. Now, the problem is that underneath the spectacle lies the cold, hard fact that Trump himself is largely responsible for this mess in the first place. Biden also bears a lot of blame here for not re-implementing regulations that Trump took away but Trump announced as president that he was, quote, continuing to get rid of costly and unnecessary regulations. Much work left to do, but effect will be great. Business and jobs will grow. And this, of course, led to his administration rolling back a train breaking rule meant to keep oil tankers from exploding near communities. Now, this came after the industry aggressively lobbied for this change. Trump is also largely culpable here. But when he was asked whether or not he shares any culpability, well, of course, he said no, because it's Donald Trump. So why would he take responsibility for anything? What do you make of Biden, or rather Buttigieg's criticism of you pulling back rail regulations? Do you think you would have made no, a difference? No, I had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it. What do you think of him blaming safe? you for some of the problems with the rail? Uh, it's actually hard to believe. I, every time I see something, I said, when will they blame Trump? No, we, they, I suppose they'll blame us for the border. They actually tried that for about an hour. That didn't work. I had nothing to do with it. This man literally bragged multiple times about deregulating many industries. But when the consequences of that manifest in catastrophic ways, well, he claims he had nothing to do with it. And it's one of the many ways his policies, specifically his deregulatory policies, harmed people. His administration killed agricultural regulations that could have prevented the 2018 E. coli outbreak in romaine lettuce, which led to people being hospitalized because they got so sick. Remember that? Remember how we couldn't find lettuce in the stores? Yeah, that's the result of deregulation in part. Now, if he's not going to take personal responsibility, will he at least blame the corporation responsible here, Norfolk Southern? Well, the answer is no, because as More Perfect Union pointed out, he didn't even mention Norfolk Southern in his visit to East Palestine. So policy matters. Policy matters a lot. But so does politics. Now, Trump should be ashamed to even show his face in East Palestine, but residents aren't thinking about politics right now. Just showing up goes a long way. And even if they're aware that Trump's policies are responsible for their suffering in part, there's a real intrinsic value to him just being there and letting them know that they're seen. And he did the same thing in Flint back in 2016. And while some residents did take the opportunity to call out that opportunistic visit, which proved to be true since he did nothing as president, these photo ops still bring attention to communities that feel forgotten, even if they are cynical. Now, I think that Buttigieg in his visit to East Palestine was right to call out Trump's deregulation. You mentioned a national political figure who's decided to get involved. It sounds like you're talking about Trump. And then you said, I need your help. How can he help? Well, one thing he could do is uh, uh, express support for reversing the deregulation uh, that uh, happened on his watch. I heard him say he had nothing to do with it, even though it was in his administration. Uh, so if he had nothing to do with it and uh, they did it in his administration against his will, uh, maybe he could come out and say that uh, uh, that uh, he supports us moving in a different direction. 
Now, Pete Buttigieg is absolutely right to call Trump's bluff here. But here's the problem. You're in charge now, Pete. And if Trump had the power to deregulate, you have the power to re-regulate. So why haven't you done that? Why hasn't that been priority number one for you in the Biden administration? But aside from being a policy failure for the Biden administration here, it's also a massive political failure because they didn't say anything. Pete Buttigieg in particular, the transportation secretary, didn't say anything about this right away. Biden hasn't really even pretended to care. And thankfully, Buttigieg has acknowledged this. But there's a problem with the way in which he acknowledged this. Let's watch. The first tweet expressing concern for the residents of East Palestine a week and a half after the accident happened. In hindsight, was that waiting too long to express anything hours after you had addressed the makeup of work crews on highway construction projects just that very day? The answer to your question is yes. I felt strongly about this and uh, could have expressed that sooner. Again, I was taking pains to respect the, the role that I have and the role that I don't have, but that should not have stopped me from weighing in about how I felt about what was happening to this community. Great answer. And to be fair, he was asked specifically about a tweet, but you are the transportation secretary. You need to do more than tweet. You should have been there immediately. Now, that's not to say that Elaine Chao under Donald Trump would have done things any differently, but... Again, this is a massive chemical spill. An entire town has been poisoned. And it just feels like there's zero urgency from public officials, state and local officials, and also at the national level as well. You need to show up. But politics aside, you need to regulate these companies. And I'm not talking about a sharply worded letter that you sent. I mean, actually wield the power that you have to prove that you're better than Donald Trump. Because currently... Trump absolutely helped to cause this, but you haven't done anything sufficient to right these wrongs and prevent future disasters. And again, it would help if Biden even pretended to care, especially after he broke a strike at the behest of railroad companies. So you break a strike for these railroad giants and they don't even give their workers a single day of sick leave. And now you can't even be bothered to show up. I mean, this is why people don't trust public officials, why they're skeptical of politicians because of things like this. Now, in truth, I personally think that it's obvious multiple administrations are to blame either for not doing enough, not regulating enough or for deregulating Obama, Trump, Biden. And if conservatives actually care about this issue and they're not just pretending to care for political purposes because it hurts Biden, then they need to not just feign concern for political reasons. They need to actually explicitly endorse regulations and hold these companies accountable. Call for criminal charges if that is what is necessary. Now, do you want to know who actually did that on the right, surprisingly? Fox News, of all places. I knew nothing about these derailment numbers. I'm stunned by it. Mm -hmm. That we have thousands of derailments all the time and what, the, how costly it is and, and how they're not kept up and maybe the regulation needs to be there. I think there needs to be, uh, there's a widespread sentiment to have a, a look at the whole rail industry, what the lobbyists are doing and, and what the actual, I heard there were three people on that train of how many cars Ten, uh, 20 of which had chemicals in it? Somebody at the front, somebody at the back, and Does some other you away? During the Trump administration, uh, apparently, uh, even when there were derailments, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao never visited the sites. But what is different about that and this is, yes. the, well, people just don't trust the government tests because they go, well, it's okay to trust, you know, you can drink the water, you can breathe the air. People don't trust the tests. And so, by virtue of government officials showing up, breathing the air, drinking the water, then it looks better. But for you know, for them to say, look, they didn't do it at that time, it's just one of those but things. But there was nothing that equated. To, yeah, there's no. nothing that equated to this during the Trump administration. And well, one thing about me. Donald Trump, uh, and there were some toxic gases that were poisoned the town. There were some fatality derailments where people lost their lives during right. the Trump administration. Nobody but lost this? their life during this. Right, but this is just just can destroy a town. So this is the right. easiest thing about, to do to right. show up. And they have it's chosen not disaster. to show up. And Look, I never thought that I'd say this, but 
Brian Kilmeade and Steve Ducey are absolutely correct. And it almost hurts me to say that, like physically, like I feel pain to say they're correct. But kudos to them for being objective, because I've seen a lot of hackery. I've seen liberals essentially, you know, make fun of Donald Trump for going there and say, oh, well, he talked about lower quality water and whatnot. I mean, you can make fun of Donald Trump. Yes, it's opportunistic. But I don't think that you understand the value politically in just showing up. But on the right, I mean, they're blaming Biden. But if this happened under Donald Trump, would they be as consistent? See, politics, politics are important. The right seems to understand that more than Democrats right now. But politics alone is not nearly as important as policies. The substance is what really matters. So in short, we need regulations, we need real accountability, and anyone who's in power that refuses to do that, regardless if it's a Democratic or Republican administration, is part of the problem, full stop. And that's all I have to say about this. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.